Hey, what up, guys? So this is Hey Mitch Mitch, and I'm doing my review on season two of Sci-Fi's Krypton. Let's get into it. Yeah. My fellow Kryptonians, six months ago, we came together to face the dawn of a new era, to rebuild a Krypton unrecognizable in its perfection. Whatever game you're playing, you will lose. Name's Lobo. So, first and foremost, I thoroughly love and enjoy the show. It's super fun. There's a lot of um, comic book references in it. And it's just, there's parts of the humor. It's super great. There's a lot to explore in this world. And it just pains me because this show is canceled. What the hell? Like, come on. This is super fun. What are you doing? Hashtag save Krypton. Let's do it. Somebody save <laughs> So for real, like, this show is pretty much the Game of Thrones in space, right? Which is appropriate because there is Game of Thrones characters in this show, right? There's Sir Bearson Selmy, I think his name is, and then um, the Septon, the lady, Shame Bell lady, uh, she's in this too. And so, great, and I, again, this is very Game of Thrones because, you know, you have like, instead of the House Starks, House Lannisters, all of that, all of that stuff, you have House of L, House of Vex, House of M, House of Zod. And so you have all of these houses and you get to learn about them and then you get to learn the organizations that they build in and are a part of, um, the military guild, science, lawmakers guild, you know. And there's a lot to explore there. And so um, going into the Man of Steel movie, the great portion of that to me was all of the visualization of how Krypton was imagined, right? And I could have just watched a whole movie on Krypton. And so now I have a whole TV show based on Krypton, which which brings me to why I love this show. I want to know more about Krypton because we know about Superman, right? We know about that he's from Krypton and all that stuff. And we actually get a show about Krypton. Going into the show, I mean, it's just, there's a lot. There, I, it sucks that there's only two seasons, but at least you get character development. You have a whole arc within these two seasons. And again, now that the show is canceled, and I hope we can save Krypton, because it's a good show. I mean, you got to see, like I said, character development. There's a lot of story and exploration with this show. And I'm, I'm, at least it got two seasons, which is great. And you got to see, like... Again, with character developments with Seg, you know, you got his story about someone who was his title, his honor, his family honor and title was taken away and him rebuilding that, gaining his honor back, gaining his, his, his house back and that's, and he accomplished that, right? Um, you have someone like Light Azad who is in the shadow of her mother and then by season two she comes her in her own person her as the primus right and you can see her compassion but as well as not yielding into becoming a strong warrior and then you have that uh, friend zone character um this uh, phantom friend zone character um dev um he's infatuated with lyda he he thought he was gonna be with lyda you know and he's been pushed aside but in the second season, it's so great. They tied it up so easily. Like, he got to be with a clone, comic books. Um, and he got to go with the clone. He got to be with the Lyda clone. And then he, he, he realized that that's not the purpose of his life. And, you know, and that simple line, you can see that that's a closing of his arc, you know. Like, it's not, it's not enough that I have to be with a, a person that I... I quote unquote love or who I think I love, right? And that was enough for that character because that that was his defining trait. Like, I'm gonna do everything for Lyda and you know, that isn't enough. And you see um, Jaina Zod, you know, like in her unyielding, unstricting person that she was in season one, she she breaks down like, you know what, maybe I was too rigid in my ways. I was too, too brutal in my ways, you know? Um, 
and then with um, Nessa. Oh, Nessa Vex! Nessa Vex! If you want to talk feminism, Nessa Vex, badass woman character, and now we will never explore this character even further. All these people in, in like, SJWs talking about, like, we need women characters. You have Nessa Vex, you know? I don't care about Kamala Khan and Miss Marvel, whatever, or Batwoman in the new CW series. You have Nessa Vex. She is a combination of Sansa Stark and Arya. Like she has the political manipulation and, and knows how to deal with people, right? But she is as deadly as Arya. And oh my gosh, talk about feminism. And on top of that, like, hold on, hold on. Let me cue in the clip first of showing her her best scene in season two of leading the strike strike team, right? So go into it. So I'm super glad that she got this scene, you know, if, if the show was gonna cancel, you know, at least I got that. At least I got her in that scene. And then again, talking about a feminine character, like she doesn't like subdue that. She, in, she uses that to her advantage, right? And she like, you talk about like, I don't need no man or whatever. She actually, she goes to use a Zeta beam, whatever, and goes and try to find her son on her own. She's an independent, de dependent character and her own character arc, you know, she was in the shadow of her own father, right? She was becoming a puppet and then she's just being a t used as a tool and then she, and learning how she can become her own person. Even season two, she's learning that she's being played by other people, by Zod, you know, and she's, still developing who she is as a person where she's good or bad or neutral or whatever and she's finding redemption within that and you know and I think that Zed uh, Seg help her develop her own redemption right but the fact is that her whole arc was great and so oh man I know that she wants to get rid of House Vex but like she is a great portion of this show and and again with Seg um, he, he was a great character on, on his own like I found him a little bit annoying at first but during the second season, um, he was he was really fun. The whole Brainiac situ situation when, when Brainiac was in his head, that was really fun. The whole banter between Adam and Seg was really fun. Which goes into one of my negatives about the show and changing gears kind of. Like this is more of a, um, a show review versus a season 2 review because now that it's cancelled, I, I should talk about it like more in like an umbrella topics. But that's one of the problems I I had with season one is that they had they were shoehorning that this is Superman's granddad you know that this ties with Superman we all know what Krypton is we know of Krypton you know we just don't know the culture we don't know the intricacies of Krypton and this is this is why you should highlight that I'm really glad that in season two we really didn't really touch upon um, us becoming Seg becoming the grandfather of Superman whatever we really just got to learn about Seg and the and the surrounding characters right and so again that was one of my problems in season one again with the tie-ins with the Superman thing because I really just wanted to explore about Krypton right and I guess season two was really fun that they were introducing more of the comic book elements into it um, they introduced Lobos you know and more Brainiac and Zod stuff and then towards the end they're trying to in, um, introduce um, Darkseid but we'll never get to see that but you know again it was super fun with this whole TV show right and I and it just it's really sad that we're not gonna explore this world some more you know um, unless it gets renewed somehow and so overall again straight from the beginning I thoroughly enjoy this show there isn't a whole lot of negatives other than the portion I just mentioned with um, the introductions to the comic books. I just really want the show to really explore on its own, right? And positive stuff, I already said it already. It's fun. There's good portions of humor, um, the character development, the, the story arcs, and the exploration within the Kryptonian culture. Again, all of it is super great. Um, going into the future, 
it's cancelled, right? If anything, and I doubt this will happen, but it will be great if um, SEG would go into the CW, into the Crisis of Infinite Earths, you know, and, and be introduced there, but doubt that will ever happen. I don't really, I really don't think um, sci-fi, I think they're, I didn't really look into the behind the scenes as far as how they are tied into the rest of the universe or meaning the CW. I, I really don't think there enough connection there, but um, it would, would have been great. And then if the show were to continue, I don't know, man. I could see it going for like two more seasons. I really don't know where this uh, show could go. Unlike just what my thing that I said earlier, like if the show just went in its own direction rather than staying true to a, whatever continuity, let, let's just say Segal just becomes the Superman of this universe. And I think that would be kind of cool in its own right. Or if they don't want to go with the like the super strength and all the superman abilities with the um, yellow sun um, maybe they can explore it some other way but if anything going into if they were going to introduce dark side right like season two could have done seg and brainiac getting their sun back whatever and then maybe season four could have been um, taking down dark side and so that could have been really good two more seasons into this so Really unfortunate we're not going to see that. I don't know, maybe we can, maybe maybe there's enough people out there, there's enough fans out there that's willing to save Krypton. But definitely it, it is a treasure that we cannot have moving forward and, and it just sucks because this show was really fun and I was hoping more people could watch it. So I don't know, hopefully I can, hopefully this video could, more people can watch this video and, and put in the comments and maybe sci-fi say like, hey, maybe we can actually have something here because I was not a fan of Deadly Class. I thought it was really boring. It was a great premise. It fell short, but when it came to Krypton, I was really on board with it. So yeah, man, save Krypton, man. Let's, let's try to do something about it and Hopefully we can get at least two more seasons, if not one. I can I can deal with one more season knowing that th if this was the end, I was fine with it. But if we can get one more season, that would be good on itself. Just like another like 10 episodes. So cool, awesome, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, again, I do like TV movie reviews. I also talk about culture and purpose. I'm also in the military, so you can check out all my other videos here in my channel. You can follow me on my Instagram at HeyMitchMitch. You can also follow my joint Instagram account at It's Mandatory Fun, where I also do other videos with my friend Jen. And yeah, so check out the videos elsewhere around here. So yeah, let's do this. All right, so thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Hit that subscribe. Hit that subscribe. Save Krypton. Peace!